Six years ago, I made a video on the top 10 dinosaurs in Jurassic World the game. And seeing as a lot has changed in those six years, like the addition of bosses, celebrity dinosaurs, and new hybrids, I thought it's about time I updated that video. Just like the last one, this isn't going to be just me rattling off the strongest dinosaurs in the game, because that would be very boring, obviously. The game now has 226 dinosaurs, as of the recording of this video, and that's not even including the Glacier and Aquatic creatures. So I'm going to need some pretty good reasons to even pick the lowest rank on this list. So before this video starts, which dinosaurs would you put in your top 10? And with that being said, let's get this started. Coming in at number 10 is Comsognathus. Not one that you might think of, but even though the compi is a legendary and is only available during one event so far, it is, however, a flock creature. This means that if it's used at the start of a battle, there is no way that it's going to be taken out until turn three, which gives you plenty of time to save up reserves for something bigger to come in and sweep their team. If this was available in the DNA store or any other market, then this dinosaur would be ranked much higher. But as it is, yeah, it's kind of just an obscure pick. But as of right now, there's no way to actually get more of these guys, so that's a bit unfortunate. Number nine is the Alangosaurus. Not one of the strongest of hybrids, but its usefulness comes in other shapes. There are usually events in the game that ask you to only use commons or common hybrids. And if you have a few of these guys, you can breeze through this event and bag yourself a free pack of food, VIP points from opening the pack, and get you one step closer to unlocking the Clash of Titans event. Being a hybrid of Majungasaur and Alanqua, two creatures that are very easy to come by, you're basically guaranteed that you're going to be getting one of these guys for free by leveling up its parents. Number eight is Pterodactylus, the first returning dinosaur in quotations from my previous video, falling from number four to number eight. There isn't much more I can add to this that hasn't already been said in my previous video. It doesn't cost any DNA to get, only requiring the 10,000 VIP points to open a pack with a chance of getting it. There are so many VIP creatures in the game now, but Pterodactylus still stands out among the rest, being the strongest VIP flyer and costing basically next to nothing it's hard not to include this guy. At number seven, we have another VIP creature, the Mastodonsaurus, arguably weaker than the Prestosuchus, at least according to the ranking in Jurassic World. But I think it's actually better. Yes, Prestosuchus might have 374 extra attack, but Mastodonosaurus has 1,197 extra health. It's honestly just a preference which one you prefer. Both cost no DNA, being obtainable from the same VIP pack, so opening the same pack might give you Presto or Masto. And it depends, it's up to you. So when it's this close, I think it comes down to the rule of cool. At level 40, Mastodonsaurus just has the nicer design. Who doesn't like a scary looking Hypnotoad? Dimetricanus comes in at number six. Our first super hybrid. These are dinosaurs that are hybridized together from already existing hybrids. I'll explain it quickly as it's not going to be the last time you're going to hear it in this list. Super hybrids aren't made like your typical hybrids, where you just fuse two dinosaurs together to make a new one. These ones require super DNA, which you can obtain from a few different ways. The first of which is code 19s that pop up around the map. I think these are limited to a certain number per day, however. I'm assuming this is to stop you from grinding them out all day. The second way is by completing events in the game. And with that, you can choose what DNA you get as a reward for this as well. One of the few resources you can technically control what you receive of in the game. And the third way is the super DNA building. I think you need to pay like VIP for this, so eh, you know, it is what it is. The first super hybrid you make requires a level 40 of the previous hybrid and a bunch of this super DNA. Once you've done that, you no longer need to fuse a level 40, just that same super DNA. And the cherry on top is that the price gets cut in half. So Dimetricarnus' first fusing requires a level 40 Carnoraptor and 1,700 super Dimetrodon DNA. But after that, it only costs 850 super DNA. At max level, this thing is on par, if not even better, than its super rare hybrid equivalents. The only thing that stops this from being any higher on the list is something to do with one of its ingredients, the Pyroraptor. A few years ago, for whatever reason, the game implemented an amber system, a new form of currency that required you to use bosses to get it. At the same time, they also took a bunch of normal dinosaurs and locked them behind this amber paywall. 
and unfortunately, a Paraptor was one of them. Which is why Carnoraptor, the dinosaur that featured at number 3 in my previous list, is no longer even near the top 10 spot. And its hybrid, the Dimetrocarnus, is only in here because of its insane stats. Coming in at number 5, we have Dimetrodon! Why? Because it's Unicorn Wizard, that's why! Need I say more? No, of course not. At number 4, we have Metrophodon. This guy was number two in the last video, so it's fallen by just a little bit. Metrophodon used to be the only Pteranodon legendary hybrid, but now there are a few more of note, but I still feel this guy deserves to be up here. Comparing its DNA cost to the other dinosaurs, it's actually on the cheaper side. To counter that point though, Metrophodon isn't cheap overall. Coming in at 62,160, whereas something like Cryoloborgiana costs 83,160. That's a difference of 21,000 DNA. For the price of three Krylos, you could get four Metries, which is a level 30, the best bang for your DNA. And it gets even better when you compare it to a similarly priced pterosaur like Secadontogonathus. It has 2,163 more attack. And when it comes to an actual battle where damage multiplies the more you put into it, it's not even a competition between the two. Honestly, Metrophodon is more than deserving of its number four spot. Number three goes to Monostegotops. In my opinion, the best of the super rare super hybrids. But that's not only why it's number three. All of the ingredients needed to make Monostegotops are things you're going to use in game. For instance, Triceratops. You know, the dinosaur you instantly hatch for all those missions that require you to hatch an unholy amount of dinosaurs in your park. Herbivores aren't the most useful of dinosaurs in the game, considering that there are a whole lot more carnivores. But, just like the other super hybrids, Monostegotops has a cheap and cheerful price tag. Once you do the one-off payment of one level 40 Stegoceratops and 2,000 Monolophosaurus super DNA, it'll only cost you 1,000 after that. Its rival, the Gigantocephalus, might have it beat in pure stats, but its ingredients are far less useful overall. And considering a Monolophosaurus super DNA has been out longer than the Gigantocephalus' super DNA, I'm going to be picking Monostegotops every time. For my number two spot, I might put something in like Triceratops. You know, something you wouldn't expect. But if you've been watching my videos all these years, you'll already know what's going in here. That's right, it's Tajagosaurus. But Beaver, you've just talked about how amazing the stats are for some dinosaurs, and you're now putting a common dinosaur higher? Ah, uh, yes. Well, let me explain my point. It's not because a level 40 Tojangosaurus has a whopping 235 health and a staggering 73 attack. I used Tajagosaurus to do this. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I'm a guy that likes to streamline my time while playing this game, so the battles are over as quickly as possible. And Tajangosaurus is the first dinosaur that appears on the battle roster when I click the weakest dinosaurs. So I put one or two into my team and sandwich them between a really good dinosaur. The opponent knowing they can easily defeat it in two hits does this every single time. This means that your stronger dinosaur that's going to come out next has a better chance of sweeping the entire enemy team with all the reserves you've just saved up. And if you have the mission to speed up dinosaurs for your daily missions or the big weekly or monthly missions, just enter a battle, quit, and then speed them up. Nice. And unironically, it's probably the dinosaur I use the most out of every dinosaur in this game. I'm not even joking. And out of all the dinosaurs in the game, 226 of them, the number one spot goes to Indoraptor. Indoraptor is the best dinosaur in Jurassic World the game by far. It has its own unique animations for attacking, eating, interactions. Yes, the requirements are a bit steep, You'll need a level 40 Indominus Rex and 4,000 Super Raptor DNA. But once you get that level 10 Indoraptor, that's all you'll need. Not only does the next Indoraptor cost only 2,000 Super DNA, but at level 10, Indoraptor has 5,103 health and 2,658 attack. You don't even need to make this thing level 40. And that's what makes it amazing. At level 10, I've used it in the hardest tournament battles. There, 
You combine it with the Tijangosaurus to make it that sandwich strat I mentioned earlier, and you max out the amount of cups you win, as well as allowing your Indoraptor to go for the least amount of attacks possible. In comparison to the other dinosaurs of the same strength, its cooldown is much faster, which means that when it comes to that crunch time during those tournaments, you're probably going to be using it two or three times in the same time it takes something like Uteranus to recharge. And it's for all those reasons, as well as it looking amazingly badass, that Indoraptor is the best dinosaur in Jurassic World the game. So, here are the rankings compared to the last video I made six years ago. As you can see, a lot has changed. Only two or three dinosaurs have stayed up in the top 10. You might notice that I didn't include any of the bosses or new celebrity dinosaurs in this list either. That's because, in all honesty, I don't use them. I think the gimmick of giving the bosses extra moves to use is great. However, the prizes for competing in those boss events are not worth it at all. Not only does it cost Money. bucks to enter, the chances of winning something good is incredibly small. You'll probably only win Amber on the prize wheel. And as far as the celebrity dinosaurs go, most of the time you don't even unlock them, which means you can't get them at level 40, unless you pay actual money, money. for the season pass. They also don't have any hybrids at the moment. The best level 40 max celebrity dinosaur version is on par with a tournament creature, which don't even rank very high on my list anyway. When putting this list together, I actually started contemplating about which dinosaurs I would put in a top 10 worst dinosaurs in Jurassic World the game list. So if you want to see something like that, leave a like. And that wraps up the video. Are there any dinosaurs I forgot about? And what would your list look like? You can leave all of that in the comments down below. And until next time, maybe I'll see you guys in another six years. Oh, bye-bye.